Hey, my name's Gary, and today we're going to talk about the Backbeat version 2. Is it good? Yeah. Let's talk about it. So I got the Backbeat version 2 back in July. I think it was the first shipment into the UK. So I've been running that for three months now-ish. Um, and it's been really good. I actually would say the overall kind of perspective on this, the overall review, um, it's been really good. It's been nice to have. It's really supported my IEM mix of which I basically go direct to the PA. I only use IEMs all the time. I've probably done about 20 gigs with this now and I've gotten a good perspective of using it in marquees, small venues, big venues. Um, I've probably got to try this over a lot of different stages as well and gotten a really good idea of it. For the most part, it does exactly what it says. It kind of reinforces the bass, gives it a lot more punch. It feels like you're stood in front of a really big bass amp, basically. Um, and if you've never done that thing where you are in front of a big Ampeg stack, maybe you've never felt this, but it, it feels just like playing in front of a big Ampeg stack. I used to have an 810 and a classic and it pushed me as much as this does this probably actually can push me more than that would but it feels a little bit uncomfortable then and a bit fake um, i have this ran relatively low the only thing that i run really quite high is the kick the kick is generally run pretty full blast through this so that i can lock in really tightly um, it feels nice it feels really really good to be able to feel the front end of the bass rather than just hearing the back end so you get a really good feeling of the percussiveness of the instrument and i think overall it makes you tighter being able to hear the front end and feel the front end of the note and then lock that in with the kick drum makes for a really tight playing style it takes a little bit of time to get used to because if you've gotten used to hearing that note bloom out the back after you've played it um, and been locking in that way you'll take a little while just to get used to being able to feel that that kind of front end of the note but once you get there it's it's great it's really really good um, like i said it's got more than enough power i wouldn't worry that this is underpowered the only thing that worries me about that power is it's right in the middle of your back um, and we're going to talk in a minute about one of the downsides of this is positioning it it's, it's quite difficult to position on quite a few straps um, but i do wonder whether it's healthy or good having it near your spine um, i've been trying to avoid my spine either putting into my top shoulder but that was quite uncomfortable so i've actually got it kind of placed in on my right hand side near the bottom of the strap um kind of next to my stomach i guess um, but on the reverse obviously and it feels pretty comfortable there and you get all of that excitement from it um the battery isn't an issue it's more than enough battery in this the charging does take a while so if you get to a gig and it's flat it probably takes you a good hour to get three or four bars. I've done that a few times because one of the other problems is the on button is this big B button on the front, which is cool for finding it when you're blind on stage, you just click it and it's on. But as you can tell, it's out of battery. And I think what happens is as it's in your bag, it hits something and that button is pushed and it runs out of battery <laughs> and that's annoying twofold because one you've got to charge it before you next use it and we're lucky like i just set up start setting up gear and put it charging in the background it's normally ready by the time we're all set up and ready for the first set if we've got a bit of a rush it has been on two or three bars before but um if i'm honest an hour set doesn't really use more than one bar at the absolute most and i have it fairly high i'm using this as my iem amp as well so it's using a lot of power and i've not had any issue of it losing power during a gig now that i know it needs to be charged before we start um, so i would recommend if you do get one 
definitely charge it before you start playing every time um, because and expect this to have been knocked and then for it to run out of battery. Is it the end of the world? No, because it, it doesn't happen in a gig, but um, it's not the most fun. Um, I did have it, I think the second gig I had it, I didn't realize this and it did run out halfway through a set. So I had to take my ears out and it, it was not a nice experience. Um, so yeah, do be watchful of your battery power on this. Um, one bar, definitely charge it before you start playing unless you're doing really short sets. The other downside of it running out of battery is it forgets all of your settings, which is really annoying. Um, so when I charge this up next, it's gonna come with the pad, the in, the aux, the volumes on the headphone amps, they'll all be set to zero. So when I recharge it, I'm gonna have to remember where I had it, which is easier said than done. But once I've gotten there, it, it's absolutely fine. It will remember it as long as there's battery. So I, I try and keep it charged as much as I can, but it's out. Good side, it makes playing feel great. Um, it's a really nice mix in my ears because I don't have to mix for the bass anymore because I can feel the bass. The bass can come down a lot lower and I end up with a much more even mix. I can bring my vocals a bit cleaner into the mix as well. Um, and it means I'm not being thrashed in my ears. The only thing about IEMs is you can have them really loud sometimes. And I feel like I might be having them quieter with this, but it is quite difficult to tell with IEMs because the room does affect what they sound like. Now let's get to some more downsides. And there are actually quite a few, even though I've said that I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna stop using this because I love it. There are loads of downsides or well, not downsides, things you've got to overcome with this little backbeat. So number one, and the thing that you're gonna hit probably straight away, is if you have a bass like mine, which is an Ibanez, um, it requires a straight jack. If you don't have a straight jack, it doesn't fit. And the supply jack is this weird right angle double jack thing where you can plug your lead to the amp in at the same time as your bass. Um, I don't know why you would do that because there is, as you can see, hopefully, there is an output on there. So you can just go straight out of here and it's a direct output as well. So it, it, it bypasses all the circuitry. So even when this goes off, it carries on going. Um, I don't know why you would use the supplied lead other than it fits quite nicely into this. Um, so I always just use the direct out and I bought a really short patch cable uh, with a straight end and a, let's see if we can get that, uh, right angle end and that just goes in there, nice and easy. Perfect. Um, and then that, runs to my bass and it fits perfectly. So I guess this isn't an issue with backbeat as such, but it is an issue with the cable it comes with. It won't fit Ibanez basses. My Music Man, my uh, Jazz Bass, my P Bass, they're all fine, um, but the Ibanez won't go because it's got this weird inbuilt jack. So I had to buy this. Might not be an issue for you, um, but I, I do just generally worry about the quality of that, that jack that comes with this. This is like a uh, Van Damme cable with some nitric ends. I know that's always gonna be fine. It wasn't expensive, not the biggest deal, like I said, but it is something else you're gonna have to buy if you have a base like that. Next thing is it has this little carriage on the back, uh, which you're meant to leave on your strap and then you, you plug this into and I'll show you how easy it is to get on or not as the case is. So <laughs> you kind of line it up and you have to push it. But if you're pushing it, if you're pushing it, it just isn't seated. And so it's a real pain <laughs> to get it to go. You've got to like push it in a really specific way to get it to lock in. So I leave it on my strap all the time um, just because that's such an annoying thing like 
I think the previous one had some kind of like click and turn, which I think I would have preferred, but you had to leave this bit on the strap, which people didn't like maybe. Um, I'm not sure. I think I would have preferred the click and turn. Um, but this does fit, apparently, quite a lot of straps because of this and the click and turn thing only fit a few straps. But this doesn't fit that many straps. <laughs> Especially if you've got a shorter body, it's really difficult to get this to fit a lot of straps because it ends up in a place where the two parts of the strap meet. So I had a grub gear strap before with this and where the lever met the, the neoprene strap, there's a joining with leather and that's exactly where I had to put this and it just didn't fit, um, which was really kind of annoying. Um, and then I put it onto a leather strap. Uh, it fit fine on the leather strap, but it was still in a bit of an awkward place. And then I had a mono strap. The mono strap was fine actually. Um, it, it fit fine on the mono actually, but I just didn't really like that strap. So I went full shill and bought a Ibanez strap. It's probably the fattest strap I've ever seen in my entire life. It feels quite comfortable, but it, but it really is fat. Um, but the reason I went for it is the bit that goes over your shoulder, it's quite short. And then the bit that the back beat can fit on is quite long and it, it fits really nicely. You can adjust it quite well as to where you'd want it. Um, it doesn't really like this this seat belt type strap because if you watch, you can uh, <laughs> slide about, which is fun. So you have to do it kind of north of the buckle. Um, but it, it goes on there relatively easily. Uh, make sure it is really secure and not on a bit that isn't in contact with you or you won't feel it at all. So it has to go over the strap like this. So it has to go over the strap like this, not in between where it'll bounce and do all sorts of horrible things. So um, yeah, finding a strap for it can be difficult. I'm quite picky about straps anyway. If I were less picky, it might be less of an issue. Um, but yeah, it doesn't like this like seat belt type material, uh, which a lot of straps are made out of. So I don't know, I might not stick with the strap. I might go back to the grub gear and just live with the fact that it, it sits on it a little bit weird. And lastly, and this really is lastly, this thing marks up horrifically. Like I've had it for three or four months or whatever I said, and it's got paint scuffs. I don't know where paint scuffs even came from, like white scuffs on the plastic. The silicone surround, is really really scuffed up and so is the plastic actually um it's generally just really scratched i don't really understand how because it's just been in my base case um and for the most part i've actually tried to keep it separate so i really don't know how it's gotten so scratched up i don't think it really matters it seems to have taken the scratches quite well um and not like uh, done any serious damage but aesthetically it's it's not lovely it's quite brutal um I'll, hopefully i'm showing you some of those now but there's some there's some quite like bad scratches on it and obviously i've only had it for a really short time so it's only going to get worse than this um this is probably going to be the best it ever is which is a little bit sad um because i feel like it it it's just going to get scratched to death. Um, and even the touchpad's got this weird, there's like a risen bit in it. I can see like this rise in the touchpad. I don't know what that does. I don't know why it's there, but it but it is there. Um, and yeah, I, the build quality, it's okay. It's okay, it's fine. But overall, I'm, I'm really pleased with this. I probably wouldn't get rid of it. I'm going to use it now probably forever until it breaks. And even then, I think they built this so it's quite fixable. Um, it seems like it's got a pretty standard battery in it. 
So I don't think that'll be an issue. The only thing that I think might be an issue with repairs will be this front panel, but hopefully they'll make that accessible at some point. Um, but yeah, it, overall, I'm, I'm not too worried about it and I'm, I'm probably gonna keep it running it with my rig. It's not massively expensive. I was looking at the baseboard by Ike and I was looking at the Porter and Davies baseboard. Um, and they're really, really expensive. You're talking about a thousand pounds once you've got an amp plus. And this was 399 quid. Um, so it's really cheap. And you can move around with this. You can't move around with these boards, you're stuck. And it puts you in a really awkward position in terms of a microphone and your pedal board if you've got those two things. So I opted for this. I'm pleased I went for this. I think this was the right choice for me. Um, it'll just be seeing how it lasts. Should you buy it? If you run IEMs, you're a bass player, I think you should 100% have it. It's way better than having a bass amp if you're that way inclined. And it is far better than just running IEMs. I would 100% say go out and grab it. So yeah, this isn't sponsored by the way. This is just my general opinion. I paid cash for this and um, I think it's worth every penny. Don't forget to like, and if you've got any questions, leave a comment below. Cheers. So I believe the previous version of <laughs> almost lobbed out the wall. That would have been a good test, I guess. <laughs>